Okay, welcome everyone. So, today I will start with a new topic, which is also the last topic of our course in optimization. The topic is called dynamic programming or dynamic optimization. The uh, theme of dynamic optimization is, is about taking decisions over time at multiple time instants, one after the other, and you optimize not just the cost at each time, but a consolidated cost over the entire time horizon that one is considering. So, in as compared to optimization in which there is one cost function that is to be optimized at that particular time, the in dynamic programming we have a cost function at each time and what we want to optimize is the sum total of these cost functions over the entire time horizon. The complications in dynamic programming arise, arise because this is not simply a separate optimization at each time step because the decisions you take at one time step impact the information that you have at the next time step and the decisions that you will take at the following time steps, right. And as a result of this, what one has is actually a series of optimizations that are coupled intricately with each other, where there is feed, where decisions of the past feed into the decisions of the future. As a result of this, we have uh, this 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 kind of optimization requires a, a study in its own right it's not merely a corollary of uh, static optimization and as a result we uh, you know it requires in a kind uh, some viewpoints and tools that that were not that, that aren't actually present in static optimization okay so to to motivate and to give an exa uh, to to explain what i mean by all this is uh, let us take an example okay the example the topic for today is what is called dynamic optimization so or dynamic programming all right and what is my example Example is what is called inventory control. Okay. So, the uh, example is of what is called inventory control. Now, inventory control really refers to uh, the situation where you are say a shop a shopkeeper or a shop owner and he wants to decide uh, the amount of quantity needs to decide the amount of quantity of a certain item. to be ordered over some time instance, some time instance uh, and we will say, um, say over some time instance say 0 to n. Okay. So, these are n time instance n time instants and you want to order quantity o at each of these time instants right and you want to uh, uh, the at e and e you want to determine what is the quantity to be ordered so now what is the what are the considerations involved in a problem like this well you want to order a certain amount of quantity uh, the goal is to meet the demand okay so the goal is to meet the demand is to meet the demand. It is also to um, optimize costs it 
you may also have other constraints such as for example, you may have storage constraints, you may not be able to store an uh, you know a very large amount of quantity of that particular item, you may there may also be constraints of um, uh, say perishability that the item may be uh, may need to be disposed of before a certain time and so on. Okay. So, so what we will do, uh, let us to formulate this problem let x k okay, denote the stock available at the beginning of the kth period. Okay. So, now our we have uh, so what we will do is uh, we will be making decisions uh, over time periods. Okay. So, and those time, but then we the time p uh, our time from time starting from 0 to n is actually to be divided into n periods. So, this is period 1, this is the end of period 2, etcetera, etcetera. All right. This is how we will think of uh, think of time. So, time for us is going to be slotted and discretized like this. So, we have to develop a convention about when exactly are we um, keeping track of uh, of the uh, of the state or the stock available to us okay the stock so our convention is going to be that we will keep track of the stock av available at the beginning of the kth period right so the the stock when we are talking of uh, stock xk it is going to be um, or say stock x3 it is at the uh, it is going to be at the beginning of period 3 right so that is the uh, so this this is this is a, a convention that we will have to we will adopt. So, you could also adopt a different convention in which you take the stock at the end of the period, but we our convention is going to be that it is going to be at the beginning of the period all right. Okay. So, the stock then let us denote u k as the stock ordered. at the beginning of 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 the kth period now once again this is uh, again a convention or we will we are keeping the convention that the stock is being ordered at the beginning of the period. So, it is at the left end point of the period all right and now there depending on the problem you may have complications such as the stock may take some time to get delivered once you once you order it uh, say for instance you order it and it comes to you in after a certain number of periods. But for simplicity I am going to assume that the stock is both ordered and it is uh, at the beginning of the period and delivered also immediately delivered immediately. So, this would mean that our uh, our time periods are wide enough so that they take into account both the amount of time uh, uh, that we are measuring, but also the uh, the, uh, the the delivery time is insignificant and then right. Then let w k be the demand for the item. during the kth period okay so it's the uh, it's the demand of the for the item during the kth period now demand again uh, is not in, is not something that uh, can, is not uh, something that we can attribute to either the left end point or the right end point it's rather a property of the entire period but the way since since we have adopted this convention what we can say is that we can 
relate the stock available at the beginning of the k plus 1th period to, uh, to the stock available at the beginning of the kth period and the demand during the kth period, right. So, so now as a result of this we have that x k plus 1 is going to be equal to x k plus. So, this is the stock available at at beginning, this is the stock you have added or ordered, this is the stock consumed. over the kth period. So, by the time you reach the left end point of the k plus 1th period, okay, by the time you reach uh, the left end point of the k plus 1th period, you reach uh, the, the inventory level would then be x k plus 1 okay, or the level of the stock uh, is uh, x k plus 1. All right. Now, we are going to assume that w's w 1 the, the, these w's, uh, w's uh, let us say w 0 to w n minus 1, right. Now, these w 0 to w n minus 1, these are let us say independent random variables. But if you are not aware, comfortable with random variables, it is okay, you can simply think of these as uh, as uh, as some exogenous variables that we do not have, uh, we do not know the value of. So, if you now the important thing here is that w is realized, the w k is going to be realized during the period k, right. So, w 0 gets realized in this period, this is w 0 gets realized here, w 1 gets realized here, etcetera, etcetera, right and w n minus 1 gets realized here uh, at the at the beginning uh, during the nth period okay which starts at uh, which uh, during the nth period or during uh, uh, during this last period here okay so these are going uh, so now because this is going to be realized during this period when we are making this decision Okay, when we are making the decision of ordering say a quantity u 1 at time 1, okay, when we are making this decision of ordering uh, a quantity u 1 at time 1 or a quantity u 0 at time 0 or whatever, the that the we are not aware at that inst at that time of this of the value of w that will be realized over this particular period. So, u 1 has to be decided without the knowledge of w 1, right. Of course, you would be aware of u 0, but not the value of u 1, right. So, this has to be done without the knowledge of, uh, without the knowledge of this particular, uh, the realized demand at that time. So, this is this particular thing, uh, because this is something that we, use, so it is exogenous and is its distribution we cannot control. It is what we we use the word noise for this, we call this noise. Noise is simply any randomness which comes from the environment whose distribution it cannot be chosen uh, based on uh, actions that you take that we can take, right. So, again as if you are not comfortable with uh, ra uh, probability, randomness, noise, etcetera, it is all right, but just be aware that uh, uh, that in taking in in solving this these problems we have to bear in mind that x k is not x k is to be chosen before w the value of w k is known. All right, that's something that uh, you have to bear in mind. All right, so let me go to the next page then. So we so what we these decisions have to be taken in order to optimize a certain cost so let me write out uh, uh, let me write out uh, write out a cost function for it so so let us say there is a cost r okay r of xk and let's what is this this represents say a penalty
for holding for either holding excess inventory inventory in the that is in the case when um, uh, uh, when x k is positive when you have a uh, when you have a positive amount of stock left with you or a shortage cost. So, this is the cost say of unfulfilled demand. It is say some notional cost we have for unfulfilled unfulfilled demand. Okay. So, how does this uh, so in in terms of a block diagram if you want to think about what is going on here. Um, oh sorry there is uh, another cost term which is say a purchasing cost. Okay. So, when every time we order u uh, quantity u k let us say we uh, incur a cost say c times u k or c of u k. Your purchasing cost of ordering UK quantity of the item. Now, these are all kept simple. I, of course, my 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 R could also depend on k here say this r here could depend on k the the purchasing cost could also vary with time it could vary with um, it is here it is just varying with the quantity, but it could also vary with time right. A natural a natural constraint since we are talking of purchasing an item not not of disposing of items. So, a natural constraint then is that u k should be greater than equal to 0. Now, the so, what is the uh, if you if you think of what is going on here in terms of a block diagram. So, you have uh, uh, your inventory now it gets in demand. W k the stock at the beginning of kth period that is x k. Then there is also the U k which is stock ordered at kth period, kth period beginning. Once again, this is also at the beginning. Then you have the cost of period k that corresponds to period k. 
So, that for us is going to be r r of x k plus c of u k all right. And now, with this information you then putting the in this information the system then moves to the next time period and you get to stock at period k plus 1. in the following way x k plus 1 is x k plus u k minus w k. So, remember once again that u k has to be u k here has to be chosen without knowing this w k. Although these arrows are all pointing in at the inventory system here, remember u k has to be chosen based on x k and the past w k is not on as a function of this this uh, this uh, this w k ok. So, now we uh, the the goal then is now there are uh, there are what is the objective then the objective is to say well I want to find uh, I want to decide how much stock should I be ordering in order to minimize my total cost. So, let us say there is also in addition to these costs let us assume there is also a a terminal cost r of x n this is let us call this a terminal cost. A terminal cost is simply a cost that you would incur at the end of the time horizon that you are considering. So, when you reach this this point n here at the time uh, uh, of the high time horizon that you are considering you have no more decisions to make that is the that is the time up to which you are looking ahead and taking decisions. Once you reach that sort of time or that end if you are left with an inventory of x n what is the amount what is the cost that that uh, having that inventory would carry. So, either positive inventory or negative inventory what is the cost that that would carry that is what we call the terminal cost. So, our total cost then is the sum is comes up as a sum total of three terms. So, you have your 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 uh, your cost of that you have uh, for holding, you have your cost of purchase and this cost apply these two cost terms apply at every time instant, but then in addition there is also a terminal cost here at the nth time instant right. So, the total cost then total cost that total cost that we incur is equal to the ex, expectation of the terminal cost. So, plus the cost that you incur at each time period. So, there are these n time periods k denoted k equal to 0 to n the time the cost you incur at each of those time periods is is r of x k plus c of u k right. So, this here is the stage wise cost a cost for e at each time instant this is terminal cost Now, what we want to do is decide what should be these actions ok or what is the that what what, what we want to decide is what is the amount of stock we want to order at each time instant at each of the k uh, at each of the k at the beginning of each of the n, peri uh, n periods denoted 0 to n minus 1 right. So, the the amount of stock to be ordered is 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 our decision. So, you would what you would want to do is minimize the above cost minimize this r of x n plus this sum So, you want to minimize this, but then minimize by doing choosing what you would like to minimize this by choosing the amount of stock to be ordered at each time. Now, but 
if I there is a little bit of a catch here and so that is one thing I want to make sure you all of you understand. So, if I write here say my action that I want to choose which is u 0 to u n minus 1, while that is correct uh, yes I do want to choose these action uh, choose the, uh, the quantity that I want to order at each time instant. The trouble with defining it uh, trouble with writing this here is that these quantities are to be decided based on the inventory level that we would see at the beginning of the time period. So, u k is the stock to be ordered at the beginning of the kth period and that would obviously be decided once you look at the inventory at the kth, at the kth period and that inventory at the kth period would depend on what demand has transpired between uh, up to that time for start from the start of uh, from the start of the uh, first period right. So, the use u k cannot is not simply a quantity that I can decide uh, at this uh, uh, right now, because it depends on the inventory that would be available and the inventory that would be available depends on the demand that would get realized all these demands from the previous time instance here. So, there would be previous time instance here there the the demand from those time instance would determine the inventory that would be available at 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 the k time instant and the demand that would that would come in the previous uh, time periods is not something that i know at the start of the at the start of the problem right so when i am trying to make this uh, make this all these when i am trying to uh, decide this this is this has been this problem has been posed assuming I am sitting at time period 0 and looking ahead into the n time periods that I have uh, that that I have considered. And since I am looking ahead I do not have knowledge of what the exact demand is going to be. I do know its probability distribution I know what kind of uh, what it is likely to be uh, with what probability but I do not know what its value is going to be right. So, as a result because I uh, the the information on which my action is to be taken the, uh, that is information on based on which I, my stock is to be decided the stock to be ordered is to be decided. Since that information itself is not available to me at the start of uh, uh, when these decision when this problem is posed I am actually in a fix because I do not know what action should I be planning for, what kind of information I should be planning for right. So, the value of the amount of stock to be ordered has to be decided uh, has to be decided only once we have seen the information that is available which is the stock that is available at the beginning of the period. So, without that being uh, provided to us the amount of stock to be ordered is not something we can decide right. So, as a consequence this way of writing the uh, of posing the problem is actually not well posed. So, this is this is incorrect this is not well posed not well posed and the reason this is not well posed is because I do not have a way of even talking of the action you uh, the action or the stock to be ordered at time k sitting at time 0, because the information for on, base on, on the basis of which that action is to be taken is not available to me at time 0 ok. So, let so what does this mean then? So, this means that we are start we are we are thinking of this problem sitting here at time at the start of the time horizon we know there are going to be demands real that are going to be realized over these periods, but they their exact their, their value is not known to us. We just know their distributions probability distributions. Sitting here we want to still be able to decide what is it that we need to what action should we be taking or what uh, what amount what amount of stock is to be ordered at each of the time period right. So, because and a specific action cannot be decided because we do not know because that action would depend on the on the inventory available and that inventory available in turn would depend on the demand that would get realized which is not and which in turn is not known to us right. 
So, as a result of this, what do we what do we see? We see that when we have to make these decisions to minimize the cost that evolve that is that is stated over the entire time horizon, okay, a cost that is stated over the entire time horizon. This cost can, we cannot possibly we cannot possibly pose this problem as a problem of deciding the amount of stock to be ordered. So, the, the plain and simple reason is that the amount of stock to be ordered depends depends on the information that will come up later during the problem itself not at this it is not available to us at the start of the problem. So, what is then the alternative? What is the alternative? Since we have we cannot since the quantity to be ordered is going to be decided based on the information that is that will become available during the problem. What is the alternative? What is it that we can actually decide at the start of the problem at this at the beginning of uh, even before the uh, even before the demand is actually realized. The thing that we can decide is not the quantity to be ordered, but what our plan is going to be for quantities that we would want to order based on the information that we would potentially get during the course of the uh, during the course of the problem or during the course of the uh, time uh, during course of time during the problem right so we can decide what is the amount how much a quantity would we order if we had a certain amount of stock available at the start of the at the start of the time period that means con what we can do is not uh, not decide a specific quantity, but rather an entire plan which tells us how much quantity should be ordered for each level of stock right. So, if this level of stock is 100 units you would order so much quantity, if the level of stock is 20 units you would order so much quantity, 30 units you would order so much quantity etcetera, etcetera. You do not we do not we do not know what the level of stock will be that is something that will come up uh, during uh, that will something that will get realized once the demand itself gets realized right. But we we can still plan for every possible level of stock that could get realized and that is essentially what we are doing here we are we are thinking of every possible possible level that could get realized and based on that we are trying to decide what should be, uh, and for each such level we are trying to decide what the amount should be all right. So, this this way of thinking about the problem then basically means that we what we want looking for is not just merely an action ok which is an action would be simply a specific quantity that you want to order, but rather an entire plan of actions. So, the plan of actions is 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 then a function it's a, it which tells you what action you should be taking as if once you get a particular information right so what we are therefore optimizing over is a function are functions functions that will map your information which is in this case the amount of stock that you have at the time at the beginning of the time period to the action that you want to take 